Welcome back to Education Matters. Did you correctly answer A? In the last 25 years, uh, state legislators have placed 10 constitutional amendments on the ballot. This year, there'll be six. Now we're going to continue our discussion with representatives of two groups who keep a close eye on legislative happenings. They are Alexandra Sirota. Alexandra is the director of the Budget and Tax Center, and um, you know, by their name you can tell they, their interest is on you know, budget and fiscal policy, tax policy, and how that impacts North Carolina. Next to her, Rob Thompson, a well-known figure in sort of child advocacy and child issues. He is the deputy director of NC Child. They focus on overall child issues and you can correct me when you when we talk more uh, everything from health and and wellness to education anything affecting children in north carolina so thank you both for being here alexander i want to talk to you because we have a lot of conversation on this show about resources and there's not enough resources or there's lack of resources and um your organization focuses a lot on taxes and budget mm -hmm. What has happened in North Carolina in terms of the tax cuts and what impact has that had on sort of the ability of our state, sort of how much money is available to spend on whatever, on whatever the priorities of the legislature? Um, well, basically we know that budgets are about our priorities and the choices that have been made um, since 2013 really have meant that even though we're experiencing an economic expansion and growth, we are not investing at the level that we could be and that's because legislative leaders have chosen to cut taxes. The result of that is that each year we have less than we would have had um, to make commitments to schools, to our children's well-being, um, to our families and to our neighborhoods. The number is staggering. Um, in January 2019, North Carolina will have $3.5 billion less than what we would have had under the old tax code. That's a cumulative number, or you mean every year? Every year, and so the cumulative impact of that, each year that we aren't making investments, we know from the research, each year a child isn't experiencing all of the programs and services that support their healthy development. We're missing the opportunity to set North Carolina on a better path for the future. Rob, well, uh, these priorities, um, some of these are your organization and yours um, around children's, investing in children's programs. Um, looking at what just happened in the short session, from an NC Child perspective, um, um, sort of what, uh, what was done that uh, you would have liked to some being, I guess, see differently? Sure. Well, we think legislators missed a big opportunity this session with new federal early education money uh, that was approved with a big bipartisan vote in Congress in, I think it was March. We got about $74 million to expand access to early education. It's a tremendous opportunity. That's pre-K, right? It was, gonna, it was supposed to be for pre-K. It was going to go to child care. Child care overall. Child okay, care. Child care. Okay. 50,000 kids on a waiting list in North Carolina for child care assistance. So these are families that need that support and kids that need that opportunity. And fortunately, the legislature took $50 million of those $74 million and basically redirected it back into the general fund through a series of funding swaps that isn't worth getting into the details of, but redirected that money for other purposes. So that's, that would have been $50 million that, that could have gone to families to support uh, child care and other expenses that they just aren't going to be available now. That's exactly right. There's about 6,000 kids who could have had access to an early education who now are not going to have access to an early education because of that funding diversion. Now this, I'm going to get a little wonky, but I mean, we talk about sometimes the uh, sort of supplant versus supplement. I mean, it, aren't there some, aren't there often federal rules that like, if we're going to give you $75 million for childcare, you have to go toward that. You can't just take out the money you were investing. And I've actually read something recently the Budget and Tax Center put out. You talked about how we've, we've got this trend of every time there's new federal money, we basically are disinvesting North Carolina dollars and using that instead of, I guess, you know, again, right. supplementing, making it, making it and reaching more kids. Is that a problem? Right. It's a huge problem. Um, and it basically undermines the priorities that our leaders say they have. If we prioritize children and their well-being, we should be putting state dollars towards that. We know that the federal level of decision making right now is very uncertain. It's very unclear how long dollars will last. North Carolina needs to be prepared to make those commitments long term. Again, to the choices, because we've cut taxes over the years in a way, again, that primarily benefits wealthy taxpayers and big corporations, we have not been able to make those state level commitments. So I would also say that in, in relation to the decision to shift federal dollars to a state commitment, as 
legislators see that they have diminished resources to meet the growing needs in a growing state, they're going to make bad choices that move money in the wrong ways. Right. Uh, Rob, anything that, um, I guess, did we, were there any, I, I said hits or misses, there may have been some near misses too, are there some things that almost happened that didn't, are there some things that you, really, you were watching real close, and sort of, yeah. sort of give me some other uh, things that we should have been uh, paying attention to. Sure, so as I'm sure you've talked about before, the, the budget process here was somewhat unique. Right, there was no opportunity for uh, amendments. They just rolled out a budget, and it was either an up or down vote on it, and it was all done, you know, more or less behind closed doors. So we, you know, advocates and you know, administrative people weren't able to see what was in it. So one thing that happened was they left out funding for the suicide prevention lifeline. Okay. It's a relatively small amount of funding, but that lifeline gets 5,000 calls a month from North Carolinians who really need help, and we know that one in ten. North Carolina teenagers have actually reported trying to commit suicide. Mm. Uh, so this is a serious issue and is left out of the budget. Fortunately, funding for that was included in the technical corrections bill passed okay. before the end of session. What about, uh, about on health care? I mean, anything about, um, uh, did we do anything to, to help expand health care? Did we do some things to make uh, health care less accessible? Or? Sure, there were two things that almost happened. So one, there was a proposal uh, to allow these unregulated health plans in our state which would have driven up the cost of health care for people with pre-existing conditions because they would have carved out healthy people. So that would have made you know, families who have these types of conditions unable to get insured. And then another thing that happened was there was a push in the beginning of the budget process to implement work requirements for our Medicaid program. Okay. And this would have had a really bad effect on uh, of families, particularly people with disabilities. Uh, real quick, last word. You, I know you guys talked a lot about this tax cap we actually talked about on the show. It, it happened as a constitutional amendment, but they raised it from five and a half to seven. Is it still problematic? Oh, it's a huge problem. I mean, basically what we're doing is locking in the tax rates that have happened that are unable to keep up with the growing needs of our state. Right. We know that's going to be a problem in the near term. We know it's going to mean future legislators have fewer tools, and they're likely to turn to sales and property taxes okay. to raise. All right, well, look, we're out of time. Thank you both for joining us today. Good conversation. After the break, this week's Leadership Spotlight.